Of the projectile point styles found in Florida, few are as iconic as the Noonan point. This stemmed point with downward sloping barbs was often made with stunning craftsmanship and high grade colorful material. The people who made these points lived during the Middle Archaic period and hunted and foraged in Florida's rich ecosystems. In this video, I flint nap a Noonan point and discuss the Middle Archaic people's culture and some of the archaeological sites that they left behind. Noonan points tend to be of a medium size, typically 6 to 8 centimeters, but can range from 4 to 12 centimeters. They are fairly thin points and have a flat to elliptical cross section. The blade is triangular in shape with extravate edges. Noonan points have a contracting stem with a base that is usually flat with square corners. The shoulders, or barbs, point slightly downwards and are straight from edge to stem. I was unable to find useware data that would determine the function of Noonan points. The average sized examples of these points probably would have functioned well as either knives or projectile tips. Larger examples of Noonan points would have functioned only as knives, being too big to be used as projectiles. Some other tools made by these people include small retouched flakes, and flakes made into small drills, all classified as microliths. At some sites, these microliths and microlith drills seem to have been important for the production of shell beads, but were certainly used to shape other materials as well. Noonan points are found in the archaeological records of the northern half of Florida, and more rarely into the southern boundaries of bordering states.
Noonan points are dated to around 7,000 to 6,500 calibrated radiocarbon years before present in the Middle Archaic period. Middle Archaic people were hunter-gatherers. However, it seems that they were often able to be fairly sedentary and lived most of the year at one place. Abundant food resources from Florida's highly productive coastal and riverine environments would have allowed these hunter-gatherers to thrive without being very mobile. Preserved floral remains indicate that Middle Archaic people foraged for hickory and acorns, saw palmetto fruits, hackberry, and a variety of other plant foods. White-tailed deer were one of the most important sources of meat for Middle Archaic peoples. Turtles were also a very important food resource and could be captured by any member of a hunter-gatherer community. As Florida is known for its wetlands and coast, it is unsurprising that fish made up a significant portion of their diet. Alligators were also hunted for their meat, and mollusks were gathered and eaten as well. Small mammals and birds made up a smaller part of Middle Archaic people's diets. Due to the rich archaeological record at the Lake Monroe Outlet Midden, we can see how these people hunted and prepared their food. A possible mesh gauge and bone fids recovered here at this site are tools for making nets, which suggest that Middle Archaic people at this site were producing fishing nets. Perforated pieces of shell found at the site would have functioned as sinkers for these nets. Pottery had not yet been invented by the Middle Archaic period, so people had to cook their food by other means. At the Lake Monroe Outlet Midden, it seems that people were using whelk shells for this very purpose as cooking vessels.
Noonan points are known for being made from high-grade, heat-treated stone, namely agatized coral. Agatized coral is coral that has been fossilized, with the coral skeletons being replaced with a nappable agate material. This stone occurs in several locations in northern Florida and southern Georgia. Agatized coral is commonly white, pink, or orange in color, but can occur in a wide variety of colors. Agatized coral can be completely opaque or fairly translucent. It is often a very tough material to work raw, so it must be heat treated. This material becomes workable, glossy, and colorful when cooked at temperatures of 5 to 600 degrees Fahrenheit. Middle Archaic people would have heat treated agatized coral and other chert by burying pieces in sand underneath a fire for an extended period of time. Modern flint nappers achieve the same result by heat treating in kilns or even in turkey roasters, which can precisely control temperatures and lead to less failures of overcooked or undercooked stone. This particular piece of agatized coral that I'm working was part of a box of material sent to me by a subscriber and comes from the Million Souls Coral Mine. Thank you, Jason Percy, for sending me this wonderful material. The Middle Archaic period in Florida is noted for mound building, long distance exchange, and elaborate mortuary ritual. Some Middle Archaic mounds used shell as the mound fill, and reached heights of up to 20 feet in some cases. In some of these mounds, burial goods were placed made from materials originating from far away. For instance, at some mounds, banner stones, which are counterweights for spear throwers, were found made from a stone originating in northern Georgia. Mounds were not the only way people during this time were buried. In fact, at one of Florida's most unique Middle Archaic sites, people were being buried in a way quite unlike being buried in a mound. 
Little Salt Spring is a spring-fed sinkhole located near the western coast of Florida. During the Middle Archaic period, people were using the sinkhole as a cemetery. At this time, the sea level was much lower than it is at present. This, in turn, caused the water table to be lower as well, which meant that the Little Salt Spring had a lower water level than it does at present. Middle Archaic people buried their dead in the soft peat in the basin of the spring, which has since flooded with water. The combination of the oxygen-poor peat and the water led to excellent preservation of human remains. Archaeologists during the 1970s estimated that at least 100 individuals are represented by the remains found in the sinkhole, but possibly up to 1,000. Most of these remains are disarticulated, which means that the individual bones have been pushed around and are not in alignment or association with other bones of the body. Several articulated in situ burials have been of noteworthy importance to the discipline of archaeology. One of these burials, of a young female person, from the west side of the spring had intact brain tissue from which mitochondrial DNA was recovered. These burials had preserved pieces of plant fiber preserved with them, leading archaeologists to think that the bodies were wrapped up in fibers before burial. Underwater excavations have also recovered numerous artifacts of antler, bone, and oak. Some of these bone artifacts have highly detailed engravings on the surface, all preserved thanks to the excellent preservation conditions of the sinkhole. Artifacts in association with the intact human burials also include stone tools, and the projectile points represented belong to the Noonan type. However, some of the human remains have been dated to over 10,000 years ago, which means that the use of the sinkhole basin as a burial place may predate the Archaic period. This means that people continued returning to Little Salt Spring over long generations and cultural changes to bury their friends and family.